Hi there, I've been getting some questions about the module two assignment. Um, there is a video Dr. Powers put together, but I think I'm going to go ahead and go through and do um, a different one to explain uh, what some to reflect some of the questions I got have gotten this week so far. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, when you come into the module two, this is under learning modules from the course menu. Go down to module two. You'll see the links to go out to Zybooks. Remember, you need to access Zybooks separately. Um, just for those on a side note, but now let's go down to our assignment, real estate analysis part one. Spoiler alert, next week will be real estate analysis part two. Um, when you go in here, there's not a lot of information, so it can be a little bit confusing. I do want to point out the rubric. You don't need this to do the assignment. However, this is how you'll be graded. Just like the discussion from last week, you will be graded on this rubric. If you want to know how to get full points in the different categories, look here and see what you're looking at. You know, and you know, for the most part, everyone starts in this column proficient. If you want to go above and beyond, you need to give a little bit extra detail or extra insight in these different categories. So please um, just keep, pay attention to the rubric. Now let's go ahead and click on the requirements. Um, it says requirements and rubric. Let's go ahead and look at the details of the assignment. So here we have smart businesses in all industries use data to provide an intuitive analysis of how they can get a competitive advantage. The real estate industry heavily uses linear regression to estimate home prices as cost of housing is currently the largest expense for most families. Additionally, in order to help new homeowners and home sellers with important decisions, real estate professionals need to go beyond showing property inventory. They need to be well versed in a relationship between price, square footage, build, build year, location, and so many other factors that can help predict the business environment and provide the best advice to their clients. I don't know how many of you have bought and sold homes. As a military family, we move a lot. Uh, we're currently on the third house, so I'm well versed in buying and selling. Well, at least not, you know, for someone who, who hasn't done it for a living. And it is tedious and there's a lot that goes into it. So this type of analysis is very common in the real estate industry. So here's our prompt. You have been recently hired as a junior analyst by DM Pan Real Estate Company. The sales team has asked you, uh, tasked you with preparing a report that examines the relationship between the selling price of properties and their size and square feet. You have provided this data set. I'm going to go ahead and click on it just so we've got it available. Um, a document that includes properties sold nationwide in recent years. The team has asked you to select a region, complete an initial task, and provide the report to the team. Note in the report you prepare for the sales team, the response variable Y should be the median listing price. The idea is, is that you have all these, um, well, we'll take a little look when we look at the data. It might be easier to explain. Should be the median listing price and the predictive variable X should be the median square feet. Specifically, you must draw, uh, address the following rubric criteria using the module two assignment template. I mentioned this in an announcement yesterday. You need to use this template in order to get credit for the, the assignment. So um, let's go ahead and click on that as well, just to show you guys all how it works. So let me go ahead and open those so we can take a look. All right, here is slowly opening the template. All right, here we go. And you're gonna have to be a little patient. I'm on a Mac, but I do run Microsoft products. It's not always the smoothest. All right, so you see here, we've got this template. You've got these brackets around the areas that you should delete and replace or just delete. Like for example here, it just gives you a note to complete the template, replace the bracketed text with your own content. You can and just delete that, that note before submitting it. So here you would put your name, Anywhere there's bracketed text is where you should include your information. So here you're going to include this section, a brief overview, including the purpose of this report. So we get, the prompt gave you the purpose of the report, but you should rephrase that in a way like I'm presenting this information for X, Y, Z. You know, this is my summary, blah, blah, blah. Picture as if you're giving a report to a team that has given you an assignment, not just in a, in a classroom environment, but what you would think would be pertinent for the business. So here we have the representative data sample. Present your simple random sample of 30, including the region you selected for your sample. Then identify the mean, median, and standard deviation of the median listing price and the median square foot variable. So as we were told here, we were given what X and Y should be. Remember, X is your predictor, Y is your response. That means we're using X to help predict Y. So in this case, we're using the square footage 
to predict the listing price of the home. All right. So now also let's take a quick look at the data while we're talking about these different variables to get a better understanding. All right, so we see here, we've got all this data. We've got region, state, county, median listing price, median square foot, and median, or excuse me, median dollars per square foot, and then median square footage. So the idea is in this region, in this state, in this county, this is the median, list, median listing price for homes in that county. This is the median dollars per square foot, and this is the median square foot. For anyone in real estate or who has bought and sold a home, you know that price per square foot is a very important um, statistic to pay attention to. So this is our data. So what we're doing is we're using this variable to predict this variable. All right, so let's take a look again at what we need to do. So it says, um, oh, let's go back to our, it says generate, select a region and generate a simple random sample of 30 from the data. So in this example, we're not looking at the full data set. We are just looking at a specific region. Um, as you can see here, we have several, we have East North Central, East South Central, Mid-Atlantic, Mountain, New England, Northeast, Pacific, South Atlantic, so that's a lot of South Atlantic, West North Central, West South Central, and that looks like it. So we need to pick one of these regions select a random sample of 30 from that region and go from there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick that East North Central since it's first. You guys can pick any one you want. This is also not necessary, but I'm doing it because I think it's easier to keep track of. I'm going to copy and paste that region into a new tab so that it's easier to work with. Again, not necessary. This is just my preference for what's easier. You see here we go north, north, that south. So that's our last record or observation in this region. I'm gonna control C or command C in a Mac. I'm gonna copy it over here in a new tab. Again, all I did is create a new tab and open it up. Now, in order to create a random sample, there's a few ways to do it. There's a thing called the data analysis pack and you'll see that a little, a little bit when we talk a little bit more about the regression. Um, it's not gonna apply here. So if you have searched online and found that that doesn't, it's not something you want to do here. What we're going to do is create a variable or a new column just called random. Random. And we're going to say equals R-A-N-D open close. What this is going to do is give us a bunch of random numbers for this column between zero and one. So it's like really long, obnoxious looking decimals. But what it is, is it gives us all these things that are going to help us get our random sample. So if you double click there, it will automatically copy that function all the way down to the end of the populated data. Very handy. One thing you'll also notice, let's say I type something here. Oh, it regenerates a random number every time. So anytime you change anything, this function is running again and again and again. We don't want that after we've selected our 30 observations because we don't want to keep having to reselect it, or we also don't want to have a, make a mistake in our report and have to go back and fix it, and then we don't have that sample of 30. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to copy these same values to another column, but make them a static number instead of a function that will regenerate. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this column, and you could double, oops, that's not what I meant to do, sorry. Um, we're going to double click again there. Notice it keeps changing. We're going to hit Control or Command C to copy it. Then you're going to come over to this column. Instead of hitting Control or Command V to paste it, you're going to use this drop down to paste values. Notice now this column is all just numbers and not a function. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is delete that column because I don't need it anymore. I don't care about it. So now this is my random number column. Okay. So now the way that we're going to get our random sample is we're going to take all this info, this data, we're going to highlight that whole table, it's taking a while, and we're going to sort it. We're going to do a custom sort, and our list has headers because I highlighted that header. So that's, um, I like doing that because it ensures that I'm selecting the right column to sort on. Now we're going to sort on that random number. Sort smallest to largest, it doesn't matter. You could do largest to smallest. I just stick with the default. 
click OK now, these, num these should be in more of a random order because we randomly generated a bunch of numbers with a lot of places. When we sort these, these should be selected from all over the data set. And as we look down here, we see, look, Wisconsin, Indiana, Wisconsin, Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, Wisconsin. So these are all different states, all different counties, which is good. You want that mix. Now, again, you don't have to do this, but I like doing this. I'm going to go ahead and just select the 30 observations. Notice I highlighted the, he the header up here. So I go down to the 31st row and I'm going to copy it again and I'm going to create a new tab and I'm going to put it here. So now I have this nice pretty little sample spreadsheet with my, my random sample of 30. <sighs> it's quite a bit to get there, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's go back to our, let me see, to our template. Oops, did not mean to do that. Template and our, um, our instructions here. So in our instructions, it says report the mean, median, and standard deviation of the median listing price. Now here on our template, oops, on our template, it says here, present your simple random sample of 30. Now I've had a couple people ask me, do I need to copy and paste the data set in here? No. In general, if you're providing a report to somebody who wants to see a summary or some insight, they don't care what data fields you selected. They just want to know it was random. And because of this random sample, you came to these conclusions. They don't care what the actual data set is. Oftentimes in a meeting like this, the people you're working with, they're not statisticians, they're not math people, they're business people. They want the business information. However, this is a relatively small data set. And if you're concerned that you made some mistakes and you need me to see your data set, you can include it here. If it's anything bigger than 30, I would 100% not include it. Um, but you also have to use your own discretion. The main concept in this section, this representative data sample, this section is to make sure you report which region you selected your sample from, the, the mean, median, and standard deviation of the two variables we're looking at. Now remember, the two variables we're looking at are median listing price and median square feet. So that's the most important thing. So what I would do is create another little table. So let's go ahead and look at how to do the mean, the median. And what I would do, this is how, this is how I am. I would create another little table. But let's go ahead and do, we're going to say mean, median, standard, deviation. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to say equals, and this is average. So to do the average or find the mean, you just do average. So then you highlight this whole column, close your parenthesis, and click enter. Median is equals median. Open parenthesis. Make sure not to highlight your mean. Close parenthesis. So again, median, open parenthesis, D2 through D31. Those are the, the fields I need. And close parenthesis. Click enter equals standard dev. Now we're not dealing with the population, we're dealing with the sample, but you can just write standard dev, S-T-D-E-V, same thing. And you can type that in. You don't have to highlight it. If you know it's D2 colon D31, you can go ahead and do that. Enter. So now we've got the mean, median, and standard deviation for the listing price. Now what you can nicely do is just hit Control C or Command C and come over to the square footage and copy it. Now what it does so nicely for you is it, go, it, it updates that column to make sure that it's reflecting the square footage instead of the, um, the column over here with the listing price. All right, I'm gonna have to continue this in a second video because um, I have a 15 minute limit. So that's at least up through the describing, describing the data where we have our 30 sample, We've now done the mean, median, and standard deviation. So I'll pick up with the rest in the next video.